So like probably most of you, I'm shocked by the recent developments in Ukraine. So in this week's video, I wanted to show my support for Ukraine and create a flag together to support them. I also left some links in the description in order to support them. So without further ado, let's jump on Houdini and get started. So in Houdini, the first thing we want to do is drop down a grid. So you can just hit tab, grid, and drop it down. And let's jump in a geometry node. And it's on the wrong plane, as you can see. So we want it on the X, Y. Yes, X, Y. I don't know why in Houdini, but for some reason, when you put it on the X, Y, it kind of points it in the wrong direction. So I think the next thing, you can either rotate it 180 degrees, or you can just reverse the normals and same thing. Now let's start thinking about what size we want our flag to be. And I imagine a flag of two meters wide and maybe one meter high. That seems like a flag ratio to me. I don't know, feel free to tweak this. It's Houdini, it's all procedural, so you could just change whatever you want, uh, whenever you want it. And let's up the subdivisions a bit. Uh, maybe to 40, 20, no, 40, 80. Yeah, that seems better. We need some resolution in order for the simulation in Vellum to go nicely. And what I want to do now is I want to quickly change the colors. So there's two ways to go about this. So either we can just select the polygons we want and ah, it's uneven. Actually, let's up this to 41. <laughs> so we get a line in the middle. Okay, so what we want to do now is select either all the polygons and then when we hover over the viewport, it's very important, we can add a group and this will be top. And what we want to do now is drop down a color node. Then I've looked up the first color and this is the blue of the Ukrainian flag. And let's copy paste this. And now let's paste in the hexadecimal values of the yellow. and. Let's paste this and then we want to set the top bit uh, to the blue and the lower bit is the yellow. So now we can set this to the group and we can set the class to primitive so we don't get that kind of blending that you normally see. So that's one way to do it. What you could also do is you could just write some code. I personally find this easier. So what you could say if and then we want to basically everything below our grid, which is the zero line in the Y axis. We want to give it one color and everything above it, we would just want to give another color. So you can really easily say if at P dot Y uh, is less than zero, then we want to give it a color. So we could say V at CD, this is your color value is, and then we can give it a channel vector which is a lower color. And we're getting an error because I have to put this <laughs> in there, obviously. Okay, so we have one. And then we could just say everything else is v, C, v at CD is channel vector and then upper. All right, let's create a sliders. And then now in order to get an easier color picker, you could just add parameter interface and just select these two. And here we could just say it's a color and then accept. And now we got a color fields and we could just copy paste this. And this is lower, so that's the yellow. And this is upper, so let's copy the blue. And then we have the same thing. So whatever you prefer, <laughs> eventually it's the same stuff. I find the code easier but if you rather select things, you can do that as well. This way your node tree is a bit cleaner, but you also don't have to set the color here. You can also do that in your render engine with a ramp or anything like that. So let's just clean this up for now and give it a null and say in flag. So the thing we need to do now is we need to add a vellum object. So a flag is basically cloth, I guess, or it is cloth in a way. <laughs> so if we just type cloth, we find vellum configure cloth. And when we link that up, we can see our vellum constraints are being placed. And the only other thing we have to do is add a vellum solver. So let's add this. 
and if you hit shift enter it automatically connects the note and as you can see i made a mistake my timeline is already at 250 frames so i'm gonna hit escape to cancel the simulation because it instantly starts simulating to wherever you are on your timeline if we now hit play we can see our flag just falls down so the first thing i want to do is disable the gravity in the vellum solver in the four step you can just hit uh, zero and if we simulate now we can see nothing happens because we haven't added any forces to our flag to our solver and the way you do it is you have to dive into the vellum solver and here you can add forces so vellum works with pops which are Houdini's particle operations. We don't have to dive into it, but just know that you cannot use all your pop forces. So the one I want to use is a pop wind. And once we add that to our force output, we can then dial in the amplitude of the noise. So this is the turbulence and this is the wind itself. I don't really want any wind. I just want some turbulence in there. So maybe I set it to one, might be a bit strong, but let's see. And when we simulate now, we can see our flag is deforming. But now it's just floating in space. And obviously we want to attach it to somewhere. So what we can do is we can select all the points here and we can pin those points. So let's set that up. Let's grab this null and then hit select. And I'm gonna select the points. And then I'll just drag over all of these and I could just hit a group again and I could call this pin and because you can see it down here because my group settings are set to $OS it's gonna call these whatever I have typed in here now, I find it slightly easier but you can also just say pin here whatever whatever works for you and now in a vellum cloth uh, we can say pinpoint to pin and now when we hit simulate what you can see is a cloth sticks to this bit. The problem now is it's a bit rubbery and I think the issue for that is that our bent stiffness is quite high. So Vellum has two types of stiffness. One is the stretch. So how far can all these points move away from each other? So now that's set quite stiff and I'll show you if I drag that down, you can see all these points are moving away from each other. But that's not what we want. We want the bend stiffness. So how far can these points bend away from one another? And currently that's set to a quite low value, but let's turn it down even lower and see what that does. Now you can see it's a bit much, but it's getting there, it's getting there. So maybe let's set it to this one. It's kind of trial and error. And you can just dial in whatever value works for you. And so that's a value you can definitely play with. And now what we could do is two things. One thing is we want to add a Vellum post process. And this allows you to create some blur in there. So when you get certain issues with simulation, you can blur it out so it's a bit smoother. And that's one thing. You can give it some extra subdivisions so you get some nicer kind of deformation without adding too much to your simulation time. But the main thing I want to add is extrude by thickness. So these cloth parameters have a certain thickness, which is set here. And when we extrude by thickness, we can see how thick our cloth simulation actually is, which I think is a bit thick for what we want. So if we go back to frame one, we can say set uniform, and you can see it's still quite big. So maybe let's add a zero in here. And now you can see that's a lot better. And this will, this will be simulated, this thickness as well. So that's very important to keep in mind. And then maybe if we give it one subdivision, we can see that's a lot nicer. Um, maybe even still slightly thick, to be honest. Maybe we can half it. And I think that's better. It's gonna look a lot more realistic. So now when we hit simulate, you can see we have a flag. So this is one way to simulate a flag in Houdini. The, the main things you need to keep in mind is setting your constraints here. So the stretch stiffness and the bend stiffness. And then the second thing you can do is add forces here. So if you go to the pop, there's a lot of different forces here. So definitely have a play around with that. And then the second way uh, to do it is, let's just duplicate this setup one and we can copy paste it and let's disable that. 
So the second thing I want to do is to get a more stylized flag setup. So this is a flag waving in the wind, but it would be nice if we could just have a flag that lays on the floor and we could just stylize it as I want, like create some winkles and, and twist it around a bit and have more like a stylized kind of product shot. So let's dive into here and set this back to the ZX plane. And in our code, we can just change this to Z. And now color is updated. So that shows you how easy it is to do code as well. Just have to replace one thing and everything keeps working. And instead of adding this Vellum Solver straight away, what we can do if we select this, we can add a Vellum Brush. So Vellum Brush is the thing I was describing earlier. It's a way to just brush over your cloth and stylize it exactly as you want. So here you can create some wing curls, you can drag it around a bit, and it has a few different modes. So what we do now is we have the brush mode, but we can also drag points. So as you can see now, it will just drag it to wherever I drag my mouse to, which is quite a nice way to lift cloth to certain things. And you can contract and expand. So here the cloth will really like contract, which is a really good way if you want to shrink something and then blow it up. It's great to add the contract first. Another thing is we can rotate. So we can rotate the cloth kind of around our cursor. Another way is crease. Maybe let's reset it now. And we can crease the cloth we have. Uh, so it becomes smaller. And those are the main modes. And the last thing you should know is you can add collisions very easily to Vellum as well. So what you could do is if we had a solver and we add a box and let's position it behind. And if we now drag it into the third slot in the collision geometry, when we hit simulate now, we can in real time add collisions to our Vellum object. You see it updates automatically. Because I'm dragging it around like this, sometimes some points get stuck. But yeah, that's about it. It's Vellum in a nutshell. So go ahead and show your support for Ukraine and you can make some flags in 3D. And the last thing, if you get any issues with simulation, you can up the sub steps. And if you change the time scale, you can either have it in slow motion or faster. And you can play with the constraint iterations. And that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to support Ukraine, I'll leave some links in the description. There's a couple of ways you can help out by either monetary donations, there's protests around the world. So definitely show your support. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.